in the morning, I get up and I work. It's a necessity to work a few hours. And drawing is my uh, way of uh, explaining to myself what goes on in my mind. I start with the idea of a drawing. I have the appetite to make a drawing. I have everything looking at me, paper, ink, pencils, and so on. And, and uh, I start sometime making a hand, holding a pen, and making a drawing. This gives me time to think of what drawing this pen is going to do. I also want in these moments to lose the responsibility of the drawing. It's not I who makes this drawing, it's that hand that I drew who makes it. I blame it on it, but this way I have a certain freedom, uh, a certain lack of responsibility. I can always blame it on the hand that I drew. Of course it's mine, it's a game, but um, I want to be sure that what I am doing comes more uh, spontaneously, more out of my own needs, um, and not out of my own uh, desire, volition, plan and plot. I think it's very important for people to run away from home and if the running away is obliged, if it's not just done as a performance, and I see around that uh, most uh, artists are runaways. From what? From whatever they had, from their own coordinates, from their, uh, from this main street, from the uh, family, from the culture, from the, um, um, from the society that produced them. Uh, society produces only predictable things, uh, like a computer sensors. Living in, in America, it's not like living in a country, it's a continent. And uh, so that one can travel geographically, one can travel socially, economically, one can, can impersonate several degrees of uh, forms of life uh, in society, I mean, political life. Um, this way I have the illusion of constant immigration. The immigration from one class to another, the uh, immigration from one city or state to another, one climate to another. These are shocking things. In the middle of the winter, I can go to Florida and I find myself in tropical weather. So that I become uh, remote from the big danger that is the main street and I still search in America these possibilities of uh, changes because the moment I have to learn something new like new habits, new languages, new uh, coordinates I myself have something like a rebirth I um, become, I reduce myself to the lowest denominator and this is very healthy for an artist to start all over again, one then gets in touch with the original poetry of uh, uh, his tender times, with uh, his beginnings. One becomes again a peasant, a desperado, and this is very healthy. In order to understand anything, one has to make his own uh, civilization and start all over again. 
And this is done by running away, by immigration, by inside immigration. And of course, there is a time when these immigrations don't take any more place in, in, in space, but they take place within oneself. These are internal immigrations. As long as I live in the city, uh, I'm bound to, to see things that uh, are uh, home, uh, uh, well, man-made, they are manufactured. It means that uh, the nature um, exists outside ourselves. Of course it's true, but uh, there is one time when we become part of nature, even if we are not living in nature. And this has to do with uh, concentrating on our uh, truthfulness. My purpose is to make, uh, transform an idea that I have into a drawing. And I'm not so preoccupied by uh, the outside world, I'm preoccupied with my own inside world. And I find these symbols that fulfill, that uh, explain, that are useful for my uh, uh, work. But I can only draw what I can draw. There are certain things that I can't draw and I refuse to draw, they are not my luggage. And I try to use, in other words, a very poor alphabet for expressing ideas that may be very complicated. And this is the nearest thing to uh, poetry, where common words are used in order to explain very complicated, very complex things. This drawing represents a room that contains the inventory of one's knowledge, a certain inventory at a certain moment, furniture, a bed, a erotic bed. There is an affair going on between a pyramid and the rainbow. Um, the bed represents history, and um, these are symbols that uh, go on through history. The, uh, this constant affair between the rainbow and the pyramid. Is it going to work out? Are they the same kind of thing? They are both connected by the uh, nearness of their artificiality. The pyramid is the highest form of uh, human achievement in architecture, and the rainbow, that still being nature, has something artificial about it, mm -hmm. so that it looks like it's man-made. This nearness between these two things make them uh, uh, be in bed together. What's interesting is that those, the two shapes that are in bed in a, what would be normally considered a very private act have all of this company with them. Uh, there is always company whenever uh, there is no moment when one is alone. One carries these suitcases that represents, uh, these suitcases are one's past, uh, one's life, one's knowledge. Now, I think that the idea was to make an inventor, to have an inventor. It was the end of a period and I thought uh, this idea of transforming uh, ideas into drawings um, was necessary and I can't draw abstractions, I have to make drawings of things that uh, I know, I know these cabinets and I furnish them with all sorts of uh, abstractions like numbers and so on. This is how a day or a life goes. It's the accumulation of um, materials that we have. And this is our luggage, time and space and history and geography and our own life. I use numbers as drawings. Number four is very uh, gothic, very restrained, very geometric. Cats and dogs being domesticated, being near people, are people. They become interesting because they are clowns, they clown people. Dogs with their black olives for a nose, with the eyes that are human. Actually, they represent types of people you have, uh, or style of behavior of people. You have brutal, clumsy animals, and then you have delicate. You have um, 
moronic animals. Now, there is something more uh, clever and more philosophical about the cat. The cat probably represents the uh, artist who is also not uh, involved completely in the life that surrounds him. He passes through life and is not committed to uh, the people around him. The cat is is known to be antisocial. This is the idea that something that was said, it's not what was said exactly, but what we understood. So we give life to this statement that it's so important, it stays with us, something that we know. It's the essence of our knowledge. And our knowledge, it's just as touchable, just as important as a, uh, an apple or a bottle or other, other traditional objects of the still life. What interests us about the record is the combination of black and shiny, the reflections. We are addicted to it. We start watering when we see it, like the Pavlov's dogs. And we think of it in terms of music, in terms of pleasures. But this is the ghost or the mask of uh, pleasures. And uh, I guess this is, in the end, how, we, how art was born. It uh, crystallized emotions. Uh, the original art or religion, uh, I imagine, came out of desire, the desire to exercise an emotion, like fear or pleasure. Now, to, to go further on this thing, we have here um, masks of postcards, masks of landscapes. These postcards uh, represent not the reality, not uh, the truth, they represent our convention and our um, idea of what nature looks like. Mm -hmm. So that, in a sense, uh, the greatest influence of a landscape have been Poussin, let's say, the inventors of landscape, who have also been the inventors of the postcard. So that now nature looks to us like uh, imitating art, of course, and it imitates either Poussin in the good uh, sense, in the good, uh, in the good cases, or it imitates the slapstick of the sunset, the, uh, all these histrionics of nature, moonlight and sun. Now, the way I do it is to solve this thing with just two or three brush strokes. I then cut them and mail them sometime, or I I enjoy making them. It's some sort of the obsession, the obsession that came recently. I'll, I'll get rid of it fast, I hope. What do you mean? You mail, do you mail them to people? Do you mail them just anywhere, just out? Yes, I mail them to people. I mail them to myself in order to prove to myself that these things have become a reality. I made them and I mailed them and I received them. What about the writing on, on the postcards here and on a lot of the drawings? It looks like script of some kind, but there are no words. Well, this is invented writing. Uh, it amounts to the fact that we read often things and we think we understood, but we didn't. So that uh, it's just as well that we go through this ceremonial of uh, reading uh, without understanding. And uh, I invented for this reason this form of writing that obviously doesn't say anything in order to prove that uh, the essential thing about writing, it's not the understanding, but the, the pleasure of reading. We have traditionally masks that were uh, caused by nations or by uh, social class and so on. Let's say we have masks of Englishmen, the American mask. We have the uh, masks of poor and the mask of rich. But uh, there is a mask of the character of people. And this, of course, it's constantly done by uh, people in, what, in every society in order to uh, function within the society without having to reveal themselves. Because the revelation is antisocial. The revelation is what's called the personal remark, the emotion the visible emotion has no place in society. And of course, there is something that is useful, it's necessary, but it's also something ugly, because it takes away all the poetry and spontaneity of life 
away from people. The more organized the society, the more you have these masks. Masks of happiness, masks of um, uh, youth, or masks of old age, and so on. Do you think people's masks actually show something about what they are really thinking about or what they really feel, or is it simply put on they, automatically? They represent what they are supposed to be, and they are part of the computer system. If uh, you don't fit in certain categories, you are out and you only confuse the computers by inventing a new category and so on. If every man puts on his real face, there wouldn't be any possibility for the computer to, to perform. Do you think that women wear masks? Mr. Steinberg, they put makeup on. That's a kind of mask, isn't it? Yes, well, that's a simple matter, but they also have, when they are in society, when they are with other people, they put on a uh, constant expression. They have invented this uh, rectangular smile. They have invented the uh, octagonal or the several other geometric forms of mouth and eyes and so on. And uh, it's a steady mask uh, representing amusement, happiness, contentment. They don't want to, they don't want to appear. Uh, the, there is something else besides this very little bit they give, this 1% or less of their personality. And this is their public appearance, this is their political mask. Now, women used to be, uh, traditionally, the uh, peasants, the mujiks, the uh, poetic part of the uh, society. The men were more involved in parading beards and moustaches and camouflaging themselves with armor and with uniforms and so on. And women, uh, when they put on masks, they imitated like nature, they imitated art. Now, unfortunately, uh, women imitate photography so that they uh, look like uh, they come out of fashion magazines and out of Playboy magazines. And this is a disgrace because there is such a variety in the world. And why should uh, women appear to be of four or five uh, types. types only? It's ridiculous. Well, now, I have here a few masks. I'll try them on you. The, uh, this mask here is a mask of uh, a, I call this mask the Sleeping Beauty. This is the, uh, let me see you. Very nice. A uh, person <laughs> defined, a young girl defined by her shadows. She is not, she is a statue. She is a, 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 there is a coldness and a, a lack of formation, a lack of character in herself. And this is the original mask, the mask of adolescence, the mask of uh, uh, noble adolescence, if you want, the uh, animal mask. Now, here is a mask of uh, a leering teenager who imitates comic strip characters. Or, let me see you again. Very good. The, uh, you notice the, this is an American mask. This is a... <laughs> <laughs> I feel a, American in it, yeah. A, um, the typical, the essential thing of the American mask is the disappearance of the nose. The nose, <laughs> being, uh, in reality, a very uh, um, um, eloquent part of our body. Why does the nose disappear in a mask? People don't like their noses? The nose tells too much. The nose is the only part of the body that still remains anti-social. Uh, the nose reveals exactly who we are. The eyes have learned the, all the tricks of conversation, of hiding, of misleading, and so on. Also the mouth. <clears throat> the mouth laughs and smiles for no reason at all, mm -hmm. out of politeness. But the nose is the only static part in our body. Well, the professor now <laughs> is going to demonstrate the nose. Uh, let's see. I have, I'm going to make a mask of the nose now, here, for myself.
Now, I divide in half. I cut a space for the nose. Reasonable. Now, let's make the symmetry, the eye. My mask didn't have any eyes. No, you couldn't see out. Well, <clears throat> no, the nose maybe is too small. Let's try. Yeah, it's too small. No, here's <laughs> my mask. But the nose, looking out, the nose is the voice of the instinct. He looks out, he needs to be seen, and this gives a reality <coughs> to the whole face. Does it, is it necessary that the whole face be covered then and just the nose sticking out like that? That's true. Uh, well, the nose has to come out for air, has to see. The only thing that one sees uh, through a mask, it's not with the eye, but with the nose. The nose is the instinct. Now, I made also a special mask for the nose, let's say a mask where the rest of the face is perfectly Now, this is the mask of the nose as a personage. The nose is our ancestor, is the true animal in us, and by the nose I mean it's not. It's, there is even the expression that one has nose. It's the the um, it's the instinct. The reason I make a mask for myself was that I want to have this privacy of being able to talk without revealing anything about myself. And it's done occasionally. Uh, I dress in a certain way uh, in the evening. That's a mask of a body. And I put a uh, smile of benevolence, of uh, contentment. That's my mask of the face for the occasion. But I know that this is something that is temporary and it's going to disappear as soon as I'm alone again. Does invisibility mean freedom? Sure. Sure, it's the only way to, to be free is uh, invisibility. How does the, a person manage that in a, say, not outside of a huge metropolis like New York City? Is this only possible by, again, escaping into yourself, as you said? It's possible only in New York or and that and the prophetic quality one finds oneself during in the beginning of an immigration. That's when one again is alone. The other thing, being alone on purpose, um, in a place where you really have to make an effort to be alone, like here in the country, I would have to make a great effort to stay alone. Uh, that would be ridiculous, it would lead nowhere. It's like going up on a tree and staying up on a tree and hiding yourself, yourself from the world. Um, in the country it's impossible to be alone. You are in constant touch with neighbors and friends. But... Um, Isn't that important? Just aren't love and affection important? Of course they are, of course they are, but they don't come from society. One has one or two friends the most. One has, uh, one loves somebody. And one has an abstract idea of loving everybody, including uh, animals, and remote people and remote countries. But uh, 
I don't believe in having bodies and cronies. Um, Is this because you like solitude? I don't like solitude, not at all. I, I like solitude when I work, but in the evening I like uh, friends. What about the creation of beauty? Um, people usually associate artists with beauty. Do you think of beauty when you create something? I think of beauty all the time. And when I create something, I don't think of beauty for sure. I think of what I have to do, of what I want to do. But beauty is remote. What is beauty? I don't know what beauty is. Beauty is an emotion. And it's certainly a uh, thing that it's remote from art or for, from, from work.